welcome back to yet another installment of Rapid Licks. If you're new to the channel and you like the content and learn anything, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and help this channel grow. Thanks. All right, so today's lick is a heavily Mick Mars inspired Phrygian dominant shred run. Um, Mick Mars uses Phrygian dominant along with harmonic minor to spice up a lot of the great solos in uh, some of the Motley Crue classics. And uh, anyway, this first half of this particular phrase put together doesn't really have anything to do with Mick, but the second piece, I'm definitely borrowing some of Mick's phrasing ideas from the solo that you find in Take Me to the Top. Uh, of course, Mick doesn't play this nearly as quickly or with as many notes or as in complicated of a sequence pattern as I put it in, but in the nature of this channel, I like to make things a little bit difficult. So, I've done that. All right, so a couple things to mention before we get into this uh, lick lesson tutorial. Uh, we're going to do everything in standard tuning, so nothing strange there. Today's tones will be coming from this super old PV Pacer. Uh, my great red voodoo over there, directly out of a 2x12 cab loaded with Celestians. And uh, this is just honestly my mic on my camera picking everything up, so yeah, bear with me. So basically Phrygian Dominant is a mode related to modes like Harmonic Minor. If you are familiar with Harmonic Minor, uh, basically all you need to do then is think if G is Phrygian dominant, then we know that the relative harmonic minor would be C, so C harmonic minor. So if you know that scale, then you already know G Phrygian dominant. They're related. And for those of you who aren't familiar with how G Phrygian dominant sounds, it'll sound kind of like this. Got it? Good. Okay. And for the ease of teaching, of course, we're going to break this down into two separate licks because the first lick is its own piece altogether, that descending tread pattern. And then the second lick, the Ascending Phrygian piece, which has more things in common with McMars, we'll do again separately as nothing. So it'll be lick one and lick two. Anyway, both of those licks combined makes the one total phrase, which will sound something kind of like this, played reasonably slowly. Or something like that. <laughs> Alright, so the first half, lick one. Just like that. Alright, so what I'm doing here basically is I'm going to start this phrase. Actually, before we begin into that, I'm going to show you something very simple. Basically, this is the same pattern we're going to use. We're just going to be moving down the strings, repeating this pattern. So it'll look like this. All right, are you seeing this? So basically all I'm doing is I'm starting up here. We got our G note right there, of course, on the 15th fret of the high E string. We're gonna be using this note right here above it, uh, which is on the 16th fret, and this note over here, which is on the 13th fret. And all I'm doing is I'm picking the uh, 16th fret first, back to the 13, 15, 16, back to the 15, back to the 13. So all together just this kind of looping idea here. Just like that. And of course you can just loop that and play that if you wanted. I mean you can get that pretty quick. If you wanted to do that. I'm ultimately picking everything. You don't need to do that for this pattern. Uh, this isn't really about the picking. It's more about use of the scale but feel free to do this every once. So anyway that's the first piece we've got. Just like that. Now once you've gotten that the next piece of the phrase all we're going to do is move diagonally down the strings. So if we started there, we're going to come over here and start our next piece of this phrase on the 15th fret of the B string. And the phrase is exactly the same. The only difference is now your middle finger will be playing instead of your ring finger. So here was your ring finger, just like that. Here will be your middle finger. See how that works? So basically I'm just playing same pattern, 15, 13. 12. So we got this so far. You with me? Okay, good. Now we're going to jump down another string and because of the way that a guitar is tuned, of course, we're going to have to go down a little bit further than just our one down and across thing, what we've been doing. We're going to have to go down two and across. So our next piece will be starting right here on the 13th fret of the G string. Just like that. Okay, so we got this so far. And again, these things all alternate. So as you notice, we're doing the exact same pattern we started with using your middle finger. So again, we're doing the 13, 12, and the 11. Just like that. Okay, so to this point, here's what we got. 
Now, of course, we're back to normal kind of uh, things being tuned and forth, so we can just keep on descending the way we started this thing. So you come down diagonally again, and you repeat the pattern, but do the other one now with the uh, with your middle finger engaged. You can see that this is alternating. Just like that. Okay, so here we go. Right, and then you got it. We got to repeat this pattern, so you come down diagonally again. One more, so now we're starting right here on the... Uh, 11th fret, so we're gonna do that exact same pattern again, but with our ring finger engaged this time Just like that so Good all right now we're on to the last piece of this phrase which would be this piece here again moving diagonally so now we're starting off on the D which you can find on the uh, 10th fret of the uh, low E string and we're gonna go just like that, and that's the whole phrase. All right, people, now that you've got that much down, let's try and speed this up a little bit. Something like that. All right, so that's all of section one. On to section two. So section two will look and sound a little bit like this. Okay, so what am I doing here? Basically, to start this phrase, I just want you to find yourself back here on the G. We're in G Phrygian. Just play that, put some vibrato on it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna play it again. And you're gonna come up here, play that minor second. Kinda like some Jaws music going on here. Uh, so you do that once, right? And then what I want you to do is jump back here onto your A string, and I want you to play the second fret once. And then play the third fret. So we got this all together at this point. Now we're not done the phrase yet. I want you to come up here and grab that note right there. I'm using my pinky, which is the fifth fret on the A string. So we got this. Okay, with me? Then just play those three notes again. All right, so here we go. Good. Now what I want you to do is shift up here to the third fret on the A string, and I want you to play that. Play the fifth fret on the A string. Play the sixth fret on the A string. And then play it again. With me? So this is what we got so far. So basically, as you can see here, I'm just looping this so we end up with six notes. So up to this point, here's what we got. All right, with me? Good. Now once you finish that, this is where we're going to start the pattern over. And to do that, what I like to do is I play the last two notes we just played again. Which is just the uh, fifth fret and the sixth fret on the A string. And then we jump down here onto the trusty D string and we're going to do the exact same thing. And of course, those of you who realize what I just did there, that is a G. So we've essentially started over this pattern again. That's the octave. So those two. And just like when we started this phrase over here, like that, we're going to have to go like that. Are you following me? Basically, to start the next phrase, you end up with these six notes. Okay, so all the way up to this point, here's what this looks like. Now we're not done yet. The way that I like to continue this phrase is I hit that note right there, which is on your G string, and that is the seventh fret. And then I repeat these three notes, like so. So we got this so far. Okay. Now, as you guessed it, once you made it that far, we're gonna shift up again, just like we did in the last position. And now we're gonna be playing on the G string, the uh, fifth fret, 7th fret, 8th fret, and we do that twice, two repetitions of three. All right, so now it's pretty obvious that that pattern is repeating. It is... It's that pattern plus these two notes and then just repeating. Just like that. You see what's happening? Okay. 
Now, if uh, this is all making sense, you're realizing that I'm just structuring these things around using octaves. So now that we've gotten that far, uh, to start the next phrase, of course, you play these last two notes twice like I just did. And then we start over that octave phrase again, so we need to find ourselves a G. So the nearest G is sitting right here on the eighth fret of the B string. So you're gonna play that just like you did before, so one, two. So that's just, you know, of course, the eighth fret to the ninth fret. And then you're gonna come back here and play the seventh fret on the high E string and the eighth. So we got all the way up to this point this much so far. Okay, and then of course, you gotta grab this note right here, which is the 10th fret on your high E string. And you got it, we play that little sequence twice. So it would be just like that, right? And of course, as you saw in the last time, we need to shift. So basically all I'm playing here is the eighth fret on the high E string, 10th fret and 11th fret twice. Now, we're pretty much out of notes at this point. I'm not gonna restart this pattern. So once you've made it to that point, which would look like this all together. I'm just gonna keep climbing up the scale. I mean, why not? So I'll just jump up here to the 10th fret and go 10, 11, 13 and do that twice. And then once you've done that, either you can come up here and resolve on that G, or you can bend to it, or you can do like I did in that initial intro and just do these twice. Slide to the G, and then I just came down here and basically did a uh, C power chord, which is a G and a C together. And that's how I resolved it. So, whole thing up to speed for that section will look and sound kind of like this. Alright, so everything now, all combined, will look and sound like this. Nailed it! Alright, well there you go, there you have it, that's the entire lick. Uh, this is the big intimidating, Phrygian dominant, descending, ascending, Mick Mars loosely inspired a lick that I put together to try and help me find some ways to just navigate through Phrygian dominant at a really quick pace. And of course, I mean, just the way the scale is structured, you know, root, minor second, that major third, like, look at that. See that, see that stretch here? That's a big stretch. So this is, of course, a very tricky scale to play quickly if you're just gonna play things like that. You don't really wanna do that. So finding these little repeating patterns like this within the scale itself can really help speed up your playing and just uh, produce some really exotic and nice sounding shred runs. Uh, and of course, it never hurts when you're looking back through history to find guys like McMars to find some clever ways to navigate this slightly awkward scale. Uh, anyway, if you did like this lick, if you found this useful, if you learned anything, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and help this channel grow a little bit. And as per usual, I got nothing more to teach you today, so just keep on shredding and we'll talk to you in the next video. Bye for now. All right, I'm gonna go find a pick, I'll be back.